Hey everybody, I'm Tariq Merchant, and this is the I'm Recruitable Show. I'm here with my good buddy, Sean Sweeney, in Ottawa, Canada. Um, but I am wearing my Blue Jay shirt. Yeah, yeah, we, Sorry, we, I had to do that to you. We don't have a team yet. Yeah, yeah. well, if you all forget, well, Montreal was the closest one <laughs> that, you, that you yeah. guys had, which yeah. Sean has an experience he can share about uh, the Montreal Expos back in the day. But I brought Sean on, on the show because um, we've been friends for a long time. Um, I met him, I think, 2012. Yeah, 11, 12, 11, 11 12, or 12. Yeah, yeah. Um, his son was a junior tennis player, Jordan, going through the process of trying to, you know, be at the next level, pro, college. And Sean came with a group of kids that he was working with through his son and started coming to some of our exposure events. Correct. And we just became friendly because, yeah. as Canadians do, yeah. when we see each other down south, we, uh, we tend to wonder what we're all doing. Correct. And um, we had a good time. So now Sean is the owner and founder of STA um, Sports Training Academy. And um, he's gone from tennis to now football, um, track and field. What other sports do you do? Lacrosse, Lacrosse. Um, soccer, high performance training, um, you name it, we're having it in the building. So if, if anybody needs athleticism, it's kind of the place to come. Okay, so I mean, this new place that he's got, um, a warehouse here in Ottawa is a perfect spot for this high performance much needed in in a city that had a, you know a lack of i think with a growing population mm -hmm. and a bunch of good athletes that are coming out of here yeah, absolutely and great coaches in the area and there's a whole opportunity to bring them all together and put them into a center and, and provide excellence for athletes and parents right perfect yeah. so i mean i, I want to first be, get into the show and talk a little bit about your background you have such a unique background how you got into tennis i mean you're not a tennis player uh, oh, initially you haven't initially. seen me lately buddy yeah, <laughs> but but you know you started in other sports. Yeah. Um, tell tell everybody um, about your story. So very quickly, um, I um, turned. I was a software sales guy for the last oh, eight years, and in 2011, just before I met you, um, my son uh, kind of said, decided he wanted to go pro tennis and maybe go to college first and go to pro tennis. And um, I decided, well, this sounds great. So I met a coach down in the south that I thought would be a good opportunity for him to go train, and uh, we built a great relationship down there. And what I ended up doing was uh, leaving my job, uh, learning his system and teaching it up here. And very quickly, uh, through his system, we got fantastic results with all our players. And they were getting to nationals and they were playing their, uh, at minimum provincials and then nationals. And, and so we had great results and it just kept on growing and growing and growing. And now, almost 10 years later, uh, we have a 34,000 square foot warehouse. We have multiple sports. We've had kids, that, we've won pro, uh, tour titles on the ladies' side. So it's just been a fantastic experience. And, and a lot of that had to do with you too and, okay. and, and your help and so on and so forth. So. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I... I have very little, I think, in the sense of what you're doing now and the whole training. I mean, your, your background, though, you grew up playing football, yeah. right? Yeah. And so what, what, where did that lead you? How did that, um, that sort of experience work into your, what you do now? Great question. So, yeah, I played, I played every sport. Yeah, uh, football, baseball, soccer, a little bit of soccer, but, but I played every sport. And had I known what I know now, I would have done it a little bit differently, okay. one thing personally. Yeah. Um, but it was great that I did a lot of stuff. Um, I, I think it's important for parents to understand that at a young age, kids need to develop their athleticism and skills, so multi-sport is great. Yep. Uh, for me, uh, it was a, a two-edged sword. I, never, I didn't de dedicate enough, but it did get me to the pro level on football, yep. uh, but it didn't get me all the way. So, you know, so I think if I'd gone back and looked and said, okay, had I just committed to football just a little bit earlier and get really more dedicated to that sport specifically, yeah. I, the, the, stars, you know, the sky could have been the limit. You know what and mean? So, so where did you play football? Uh, Toronto. At Toronto. Yeah, that was my final stop. Tried over for the Argonauts. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And how about baseball? Because I know you're a good baseball player too. Yeah. So uh, it was funny. So I, I played um, up to junior in the in the in the, in, the, in the, before college, before yeah. university, and then there was an open tryout here for the Expos. Um, I can't remember the year. Forgive me. Say say ninety ninety one. And I said, "Oh, this would be." When did they get? When did they lose their team? By the way, had was to be after that because they were still having It was, still just have in the, late, it was the late nineties. Must right? have been. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it was like right when they were having that amazing season. Yeah. You know why? <laughs> right. They didn't take me. Yeah, they didn't take you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Had uh, Sean been on the team? Yeah, it was a the different story. Still would be there. Have been yeah, there forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So me and Yuppie. No, it's uh, it was amazing. So I got there was an open trial here in Ottawa for the Expos, and um, so I said to my buddy, so "Listen, we got nothing to do today. Why don't we go over to trial for the Expos?" Okay. So we did, and, and uh, we got on the field, and there had to be I don't know 100, 150 kids that were there trying out, and I hadn't played in two or three years. 
Okay. And because I was playing college ball and uh, sure. so I didn't play baseball. And so we just go over. And so uh, we went over and, and by the end of the day, there was me and a pitcher standing. And um, literally, it was pretty cool that, 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 you know, that we got that far. Yeah. And it started to pour rain. Okay. And that was the end of the tryout. And uh, it was pretty interesting because I think my, my dad came and he goes, why don't you call them back? Because they, they, they liked you. I said, eh, you know, if they wanted me, they would have emailed me or, talk, or called me or something, right? But right. it was pretty, to be there and still standing at the end of the day was pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. You know what I, mean? I mean, most people don't even get no, they're, cause close they're, they, to they, that they cut, like, if you were there five minutes, they started cutting. Right. So you, you got the, to the point. It was me and the pitcher left. Me and the pitcher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so you didn't go to the States. You didn't, pl you didn't, you didn't play. Uh, I had an offer uh, okay. down in the States and um, I lost it uh, through personal reasons. Okay. And so I ended up coming uh, to Carleton University here in Ottawa, Canada. Yeah. And uh, loved every second of it. Wouldn't change the world. Um, had a great time. A great people. Uh, there's still 65 guys on that, uh, that 86 or 89 team. But I still think I could pick up the phone and call and say, hey, listen, I need something. Can you help me out? Yeah. And they would be there for me. So it was worth it. Mean, I loved it. The experience was amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, I know that now things have changed. I mean, even back when you went, like, were so a lot of guys going southbound? Were they going no, to play? No, in the it, it was the wild, wild west. Okay. So this is back in the 80s. It's the 85, 86. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple guys. I won't name names because it's uh, not fair. But there, there was guys sending a video, it was VHS tapes. Yeah. So they send a VHS tape out to a college recruiter or coach, and they get it back. And we had a couple good players. And uh, I'll name this gentleman's name because he played up playing for Washington Huskies. Well, I sure. think he won the Rose Bowl. Sterling Hines, who yeah. was uh, running back before me uh, at this high school I went to, and uh, great player. Great. I think it, I think he was on the Olympic team for sprinting as well. Don't quote me on that one. Uh, but amazing athlete. But there was people after him because back in the day, Wild Wild West, they were sending his game film in, right, and saying, yeah, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> because it was wild. I mean, it's just crazy. But it wasn't like today. Like, no one had the idea of how to do it. Uh, even myself, it was lucky that I even got the idea. I wrote a lot of letters. Yeah. Uh, out to all kinds of college, but I had no idea. Like, Arizona wasn't going to come recruit me. And uh, I did get a nice letter back from the um, Irish, which was kind of cool. But That's it was cool. kind of a general letter. But it's, I kept it because it's kind of cool. Yeah. But I did get offers from great schools, including a big one that um, I, I did accept and somehow blew it in between. But that's between me and them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? so, so, Sean, like, tell me now. Like, okay, so you're talking about the past yeah. and your experiences. It's, it's completely changed now. As you went through it with your son, um, what and team about guy. five years yeah. ago and yeah. all the kids yeah. that were working around there yeah. how did this now come about how are you now able to be so success successful you have had so many kids we've yeah. worked together many yeah. times i've i've helped you and you've helped me yeah. um with these players go through that have all you know many of them have gone to the u.s yeah. uh, in the right opportunity they've yeah. had great careers they've had amazing academic results which yeah, is that's most the best important, part yeah. right and yeah. they've come back and they've got great jobs yeah. and some of them even work for you now yes which is unbelievable yeah. so um you know i can't get rid you, of them how, <laughs> even if you wanted <laughs> yeah. to right um yeah. it, how do you how do you how have you built that how have you learned and um kept up with all these changes uh that's a great question and i'm going to give you props because, um, as I said, our, my day was wild, wild west. Yeah. Um, then you came when I first met you and we started doing the exposure camps down in the U.S., getting these kids exposure to the college coaches, even if it was just exposure and talking and learning, yeah. education. It was fantastic. And we did, the, we did the two tennis camps here. We actually brought guys up and did our clinics That's here. Right. Yeah. And that was awesome. Uh, but what you taught me from day one, um, Tark, was that, hey, uh, there's a process to this. And uh, it's not the wild, wild west anymore. If you want to be successful at getting recruited in the U.S., this is, these are the steps that you have to take. And I believe you called it the seven-step process, yeah. right? Yeah. And there were seven steps you had to take to get to, to, to the highest level or, or get noticed and get recruited and find the right school for you. And I believe from day one, every kid that comes into this academy has to go through, if they're interested in playing pro or college, because we yeah. want to set them up regardless, um, that they'll have the opportunity to um, get there through this process. Okay. And we still leverage that. And, and so that's, I think, why we've been successfully able to place kids when they're ready. Now I'm back at a time point where I'm back to U14 kids, so it's going to be a few more years before right. those kids are ready. But as you know now, we have football players that are going. And even Christo and the team here on the football side, like they have to go down and travel to the States to get the exposure and so on and so forth. And we're going to expose them to your software and tools and you to make sure that these kids have the best opportunity because we have some amazing athletes in here. Right. No, you, you definitely know? do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredible how much talent there is now in Ottawa yeah. and how you're able to hone these, these skills, skills with these kids yeah. and keep them interested. Because I know, like, I... And I'm sure you're similar. Like, you know, you play the sports that you had the most fun or that you were talented in, but you had fun in because yeah. of people around you and the coaches exactly. and stuff. And you saw um, increase in your in your development. Yeah. You saw results, yeah. right? And so here at, at, at STA, you guys are, you know, probably doing similar methods, right? I mean, what is your, you know, let's say a kid walks in and he's 
14 years old tennis player, for example, because that's that's what we uh, or I do. Um, I do too, buddy. Yeah, and you do. But I mean, you do a lot of sports now, and yeah, and, yeah. and but as a as a tennis player background yeah. myself, yeah. I'm going to say, look, if I had a son, Sean, yeah. and I want to bring him here, yeah. and I want him to be a high performance athlete, and and I want him to be play in college, and yeah. if he's good enough, he can play pro, all that yeah. stuff that yeah. every parent and child dreams of doing. Yeah. Um, you know. If I bring him in here, he's 14 years old. Like, you know, how are you going to get get him better? Um, well, we're going to provide him the best advice possible. But start. So my whole process starts the minute that child walks in the door. Okay. So the minute that child walks in the door, we're starting to assess, right? And mom and dad may want something, but I'm looking at that child, and the relationship between the parents. And there's an entire neurological assessment that's going on. There's a physical assessment that's going on uh, that happens, and then there's obviously a tennis assessment that goes on. Yeah. And then once that child, if we determine that that child is committed to his or her goals then it's an entire process that kicks into place to allow them to reach the highest levels. And through this process and systematic approach, we're able to take the kid wherever they want to go if they're committed. Okay. Right? And I think that's anywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. Now, we just have a process and a systemized approach to allow them to do that. Right. Right? That, that may or may not be different than anybody else's, but we believe it's slightly different. Okay. Yeah. No, especially, fair if, especially as they walk in the door and they're being assessed right away. Right. What's the mental capability of this child? What's the learning aptitude? What, how do they learn? Right. And so... Um, how big of a part is the coaches and versus the exposure and um, the kids' sort of commitment level? Like, you know, I assume that all of that has to has to come together, place, right? Put together. Uh, I, I think coaching is incredibly important. I think having a system in place in your facility is incredibly important, so that the child does not get confused throughout their career. That they're getting uh, consistent advice and t training across. I think the system, the methodology on how you train that child has to be crystal clear. You have to prevent injuries as well, not just train, 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 train. So right. the performance side becomes very, very important. Uh, and then the, in the background, on, and I don't even want to say in the background, but the uh, importance of putting them in a process, especially as they hit grade nine, to allow them to uh, reach their uh, potential at school, to get to a school if they want to go that route. Right. On the tennis side, I, I treat any kid that, that says they want to play pro or go to NCAA as a pro. Because I think the two now are almost intertwined. Like yeah. you, especially D1, high D1, yeah. I think you have, to be, you have to be pro level. Yeah. So the minute you say, I want to play Division One, I, I want to play for University of Miami, uh, boom, you're D1, that's a tie-in school, yeah. you're going to be treated as like if you The guys pro. and girls on those yeah. teams They're could be top 500, 500. 600, yeah, exactly. 1,000 in the, in the world. world, that's still pro yeah. tournaments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, the minute they say that, okay, you're, you're, you are Division One, top rated, we are going to train you that way. Yeah. Like a pro. Yeah. And your fallback is University of Miami. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, but we're going to put. Although that's still a great option. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. I mean, Listen, you're getting. At getting, the end of the day, we yeah. have, my partner Ray calls. Uh, we're human engineers. Right. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to build the best child possible and help them reach their goals. But if they end up being a lawyer, a doctor, a pharmacist, whatever, that's perfect too. Right. You know what I mean? And that's they have too. the experience that them. we had. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And the opportunity. You never know what it leads to. Oh, you never know. And people who you're going to meet, and, yeah. and, and where you can, the career path you can take. Right. I so. feel. I feel like so many people are get confused about you know the specifics of the sports you know you and I talk about that like a lot like you know with our company yes I'm a tennis guy but also played a lot of sports growing yeah. up you know started with ice hockey and 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 um, and baseball and stuff before He's I even Canadian. touched before I even touched the racket I'm <laughs> definitely Canadian yeah. you don't have your Tim Hortons by the way it's over there okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so we're you know we we love our Canadian sports that are big here. Yeah. Tennis has become big yeah. with the recent, you know, uh, pros that we've had. Yeah. Um, we've had some in the past when it was popular. There was, there was a while when nobody was really on the scene other than Nestor, yeah. you know, and um, and maybe I think it was Maureen Drake. Was but the, it? But they, yeah, Maureen was but, around, but they've done a great job continuing to pump out with Dennis right. and, and with Milos and with Jeannie. And, yeah, we've got and now tons the young of great. Comers, yeah, and, you know, so it's been but, great. But like people confuse Basic. people confuse the the sports aspect of um, you know the fact that. Sports is sports, right? So like when people come into SDA, like yes, you have your sports specific training and your skill development, but isn't the overall method and thought process the same for every sport? Like, you know, where you're looking at, for example, you're saying we're gonna, if you wanna be at that level, you're committed to be the pro level, mm -hmm. call it high D1 college level, yeah. like you need to have that commitment level. Yes. You're gonna come in and train, yes. Yes. obviously specific to your sport, yes. but you're gonna train with the same mentality and the same desire and the Regardless. same, right? Regardless yeah. of what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. And um, that's kind of like the way we do it with the recruiting, yeah. like it's the same thing. Yeah. Like, you know, it doesn't matter if the kid's a tennis player, yeah. a golfer, a baseball player, a basketball player, it's okay yes you have your sports stats with the coaches will evaluate yeah. but your the process is the same, same. yeah 
Thank right? you. Yeah. And so, um, you know, people sometimes get confused about that, I feel like. You know, they come into a place and they want just a tennis specific academy, yeah. or they just want, you know, a, a football specific. And if a place does a lot of it, it's like, oh, well, how does this work? So, like, how do you, how do you sort of um, deal with oh, that? That's a great question. Um, with the parents, it's hard. Yeah. To deal with that, yeah, that's right? what I'm saying because I feel like you they know, think and I, they and want this, more. Yeah, and this is not too insult, but it's Eastern European parents, they get they're very specific in how they want things done, sure. which is fine. Sure. And that's that's fine. their culture. That's their culture. Yeah. It is. But you know, nowadays there is there it really honestly, if you want to become the best athlete in in, in or get a D1 scholarship, you must become an all-encompassing athlete. And for me, you know, it used to be you played four, five, six hours. You served like crazy. You did everything, and like the kid was worn out by the time they were 19. Yeah. A lot of injuries potentially, right? Yeah. We, we, we believe in building the athlete. Performance first. So uh, they men, my, even my high performance kids, they may spend, you know, we try and limit them to three hours on court. Now they should do other stuff. They should do serves and do some stuff off, off court. But the, most of the time should be spent in that other room with the weights or back here training for, for speed and power and injury prevention. Right, so an hour and a half to two hours in here every day, stretching, rolling out, using our recovery tools. Yeah. Right, to me that's tremendously important. It, it, and I hope that's where you wanted me to go course, with this. Of but course. To yeah. me that's tremendously important to build these athletes to get into that level. If you're not doing that, if you're at an academy that's not doing that, where they're saying, yeah, four hours is great, they're just lying to you. Because those, those athletes on court now, yeah. in tennis, in football, in track, whatever, lacrosse, they are athletes. Yeah. They're machines. Yeah that have been trained like machines to allow them to get to do that. So if you think, hey, I want to play top D1 school, and, and you see this more than I do, if you want to play top D1 school, you are a top D1 athlete. You're a pro athlete. Definitely. You're on your way. Definitely. If you want to go to, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, if you want to go to an academic school, and I say that in all fairness, yeah, a yeah. D3 school, yeah. um, you're going to pay quite a bit of money to go do so, but you're going to have a great experience, great, great time there. Yeah. You, you don't have to do what I'm asking, probably. Right, right. right? Those, are, good those are really small group of people that are willing and able to do that at yes. that extreme level. Yes. yes. Although you're training kids at all yes. levels, right? And exactly. But, but those kids will have a yeah. slightly different pathway, yes. right? Exactly. And we treat here, I mean, we treat everybody here like the same. Right. So if you walk in the door and say, I want to play pro tennis, and you can't hit the ball and you're 15, I mean, we're still going to treat you like a pro athlete. Sure. But I'm going to be honest with you. Right. As a student, I'm going to say, listen, Fair enough. <laughs> you, I gotta, it's not right for me to take your money right. and not be honest with you and say, listen, um, you have the goals, you can make it work, but here's the work you're going to have to put in in the next three, four years. Right. Or be willing to go pro when you're 25. Sure. So you put the time in. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you, gotta yeah. be, you, gotta, you have to be honest with people. I'm sure in your business too, in recruitment side, you know, I want to go to University of Miami. Well, you're a man and you're, you know, you're 17 years old and your UTR level is seven. Right. Don't think you're going to play on that team. Yeah. Well, you could be the water boy. Yeah, <laughs> but you got to be honest, right? Yeah, you can't. Oh yeah, you're going. No problem. Yeah. No, you're playing number one at Miami. No, no and that, that, that's the problem. That's what we've always shared in common yeah. is that you know there's a sense of of um, commitment and and um, sort of we care so much about the athletes yeah. and the families that like yeah I want I want them to get somewhere. So yeah. by telling them they're going to get there when it's impossible yeah. with that kind of situation, or at least tell them here's where those players are at. Yeah. Here's where you're at. Yeah. In order to get there, you've got to do this, this, and do this. The work again. And there takes a certain amount of time. Yeah. And, 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 and your time's this. Yeah, and your time's this. So, you know, out. sometimes yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. And sometimes, like you said, yeah. uh, you come in at 15 and, you know, you might be like, well, you might be able to be a pro at 25, yeah. you know, but Just you have to understand yeah. that time. We, we have an athlete right now, right now. He's, he's probably, he's only been playing for a year and a half. And now he's competing against, he's not winning, but he's competing against national level kids and doing quite well. Okay. Right? And, and, but I'm like, look at him. Well, okay. If your goal's pro, yeah. it's, it's, you, you need the time. You need that match experience. You need, you need that 10 years. You know what I mean? So whether it's, or maybe cut in half with deep practice. But, sure. but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. It's yeah. going to take some time to get there. And, um, and maybe college is a great stop for you on the way. Right. Right? And it probably is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it works out for yeah. a lot of people. I mean, in, in football and b basketball, like, college is the pathway. Yes. Right? Like, yeah. I mean, you, you have to yeah. go there yeah. first. Yeah. Um, unless for basketball, and, and listen, you're in Europe or somewhere. But you're going 99% of the tennis kids, it should be the pathway as well. Exactly. Yeah, there's only exactly. a few. Like, even, you know, there's only yeah. a few like Dennis Chapo, uh, you know, Chapo yeah. that just come out and been able to go straight there and make tw top yeah. 25 in the world. But right? he's that, doing that at age 18, 19. Yes. Right? You yes. know, at 18, he's already doing that. So when he's ready to go yeah. to college, it's like, but you're already in the top 25 yeah. in the world or top 50 in the world. So you've already cut, made you're, it. You're there. You're there. You're there. Yeah. And, yeah. and what I love, I mean, I talk about Dennis a lot with the kids because his, his, his if you look at the check boxes, they're all checked. And I'm sure it's everybody who's made it to that level. But you look, I mean, one national, one provincials, check. Yeah. One nationals, check. One ITFs, check. 
won pro tournaments, futures, check. Yeah. Run check. Oh, I don't know if he did challenge. Probably, probably. I'm going to say check, yeah. though, right? I mean, what if? <laughs> Made yeah. a quarterfinal he, he went, of uh, Masters yeah. 1000. Sorry, beat Nadal. Yeah. You know, check. Check. <laughs> you know, it's like. So, yeah, <laughs> you're on your way. Go ahead. Go play pro. Yeah. Right? But the rest of us get gun. And maybe be like Israel and you play two years of college or three years yeah, of college. Four, actually. Four. Did he play four? four? Yeah, did he, he didn't have to probably, yeah. but he yeah. did. Yeah, okay, there you go. And then yeah. out you go, right? But Actually, I'm pretty sure he did. It's Steve Johnson that played four for sure. Yeah, he was, we'll undefe- to, he was undefeated we'll to, in four. We'll have to fa- fact check that one yeah, later. Yeah. Um, I, I feel, like, I feel like Trump now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fact check me. <laughs> um, so, Sean, um, let's talk about um, sort of the last piece of this puzzle um, that I'm trying to always figure out. Um, is so parents will come to me a lot and so they'll say okay you know where do I go where do I train you know who should I send my kid to yeah. some of the stuff we we're just discussing today yeah. is um, some of the things everyone's looking for but struggles to find I mean yeah. you you've been outside the Academy world where you sent your kid to places yeah. for many years until yeah. he became um, what well, ninth grade pretty much when you started it right when he was uh, in, no, yeah grade 10 yeah grade, grade, yeah, grade 10. 10 so you know it was just yeah. the last few years of yeah. him yeah. but until then you, you spent all the time yeah. you know I, I trained at different places yeah. uh, I see kids going to different places yeah. There's some places that fit, some places that don't. Sometimes they don't get what they're looking for. What's your best piece of advice and information that you can give to parents and to athletes to say, look, you know, when you're going, if you really are committed to play your sport, your goal is to be a college or pro level player. You know, what am I looking for in a place where I can go train and you reach my potential? So I can't answer for all sports, although it it might be similar for all sports. Uh, But I, I think you need to find a place um, again, depending on your financial ability, you you need to find a place that uh, has a track record. Okay. So, what are the results? Have they done it before? Can they do it again? And um, and it's why. When, so, when I seeked um, advice or help for my son, uh, I found a coach who had done it at the junior level. So he had 30 international junior titles. He had three girls in the top 10 in the ITF in the world at the same time. Um, he had also 90 tour titles in singles and 45 in doubles. His players had won against Kei Nishikori, against Juan Montino Patro. He had done it from the baby steps all the way up to the pro level. Okay. Yeah. So to me, that, that just says, okay, this guy has something different than others. Right. And, um, so He's had success at all levels. At all levels. So he can, yeah. he, can, he can develop you at all levels. Right. So that system was, and so success was there all the way through. And then, um, and I don't want to tell it our home, but I know our story. I don't know other people's story. Right. So I, I look at what we did on the tennis side. So from a guy who, as you said, has not played a lot of tennis in his life, to take 12 different kids to nationals over the last eight years using the system, says again, it's a testament to his system that allows us to keep growing kids and, 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 and developing players. And I'm sure it's the same way at other academies. So if you're out there in Vancouver or if you're in Idaho or wherever, you're looking for a program that's able to duplicate success over and over and over again. Right? And if they can't do it, if they have one-hit wonders, yeah. that's a one-hit wonder. IMG is a great place. Um, I think they're great. those places are kind of great academies and a great experience for kids. But make sure that your kid is getting the best for the dollar, if that's what you're looking for. Right. right? Make sure he's up there with the, the Nick Boletaries and on the top, the top couple of courts. Otherwise, you're, in, my, in my opinion, I don't want to get him in trouble. Yeah. So I'm not going to say anything. Now. I'll just leave that one right there. Okay. Right? Um, but it's yeah, a, you can get lost. Well, that's the thing. Get lost. So people you can, get, can lost, get lost right? in academies yeah. or training centers because there's a lot of kids there. Yeah. Obviously, every yeah, great academy yeah, yeah. needs to have players. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have players, you don't create the competition competition exactly and, and, and of course as a business you need to have players too <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean yeah, that's just yeah, natural yeah. but you want to have players for competition yes. you want to have a lot of great coaches yes. the more players yes. you have the more coaches you can hire yeah. and have around them Correct. and you can give kids that opportunity exactly. but and again um, we're looking at that success path right? yeah they've, they've done but it's it. difficult because so, sometimes they do get lost so like yeah. you know is it just that that place isn't the right fit for that kid um, because they got lost in there or they're not getting the attention they got to go somewhere where they will get the attention yeah. or maybe they're they're, and that's they're not good enough for that place or too good for for that place, yeah. how, do, how do you see that? Well, I think every kid's good enough for any place they show up at. I, I, agree I, th- with I that. think it's our responsibility to help you become your best, regardless of where you go. Um, so, but maybe the fit is not right. Maybe you know you're on court 17. Yeah, and that's, and that's okay, right? You're on court 17, but we got to get you on court two or three. Yeah. So maybe then going to a private coach in tennis, yeah. to a private coach or someone more who can help you out more one on one. Maybe that's right for you to start yeah. until you're ready to be on court two, three, or one at, at a place like that. Right. You know, potentially. So, but again, in my opinion, my best advice is just to find a, an academy or a place or a coach, regardless of your sport or regardless of the training you're looking for, that's had success in the past. So they understand how to do it. Okay. Right? And I'm not just talking from a player, I'm talking from, as a coach. Yeah. Because what I find in tennis is there's a lot of players who coach who aren't necessarily 
good coaches. Right. Right. You They've know? had good playing yeah, careers. You played well. So you didn't player. even mention that. Like you had you didn't mention once how good of a player that coach is, like when assessing them. And I think a lot of people do that. They're like, oh, because you know, especially when you're doing with recruiting and you get letters from kids yeah. who are asking you for help or they're sending it to college coaches, they always say, you know, this is my coach and he was a former college player yeah. or a played former Davis Cup for so and so. But like you didn't even mention that so for I mean and to me it's the same way like if I'm sending my son to a place uh, whether it's tennis or another sport like uh, I'm more interested on that coach's philosophies yeah. how they yeah. actually their methods yeah. of how they train kids and yes. their success, and their success uh, yeah. at all the levels yes. I don't care if they've ever played or no. not because especially in tennis yeah. you know we care a lot about um, what that player did yeah. you know like in, in be- Scotty Bowman, yeah. Montreal hockey team, legend coach. There you go. Yeah. The Canadians were the best team you've ever seen. Barely played the game. Yep. My understanding. Yep. It could be wrong, but it's my understanding. But you said it over again, because guys like myself, and I'm, I'm, listen, there's great tennis players who are great coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Um, but guys like myself have had to study so hard and put systems in place to allow these kids to success. Right. But then, to me, they just go back and look at this pathway. Look at the successes these coaches have had, regardless of your sport. Have they done it over and over again, or was it a one-hit wonder? Right. And if they've done it over and over again, each each graduating group that comes out that are getting scholarships or going pro, then that might want to look at that academy, regardless of where you are, right? And I'll give you a great story. So when I left, yeah. when I when I decided to become, I quit my job, crazy me, I quit my job to become a tennis coach and learn the system out of Atlanta, and. Um, be- but before I, right before I did it, I, I called the coach because I'm kind of hesitant, you know, making yeah. nice money, nice living, wife's happy. I said, um, you know, where can I send my kid? Because I know you have the four girls, that's who you're working with, and Jordan's welcome there anytime. But it's, you're not, you know, he's not your commitment. Yeah. Fair enough. And in yeah. all fairness. Makes okay? sense. So he goes, listen, um, either he's with me or he's in Spain. And I thought that was very telling at the time, because this was a few years ago, okay. of the U.S. system. Okay. When he said, with me or in Spain. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. That's pretty telling. I'm not going to Spain. So I said, that's the point actually when I said, listen, can you teach me your system and I'll teach my kid? Right. Which is really cool because he said yes. So I went, I spent, I don't know, you know how yeah, much time I spent. Yeah, you went there all spent, the time. Yeah, yeah. How much time I spent. And I still do. We still spend 120 hours a month, a year with him. Yeah. And um, continue to educate you. But what was amazing to me is that, 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 that like Spain or, or nowhere really, like, or with me or Spain. And he was being dead honest. And it was really cool to, um, um, to, to, to see the honesty and, and, and where he was taking us. So I quit the job and I did it, and it's been a whirlwind since then. I mean, just crazy. Yeah. And you can help me where I was going because I got distracted by the. No, 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 yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a great story. Yeah. Um, and so, any final thoughts? Oh, uh, never. No? No, final. That's, that's dead. That's, we're stopping time. It can't be final. I, I think the biggest thing, um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you one bit of advice or okay. not you but people yeah. watching I think a big thing uh, for your kids because this is Tark's uh, I'm Recruitable show and I think it's very important that you we talked about it earlier yeah. process um, and, and make sure that you follow the process it's, it's so important that your kids start writing the letters or, or doing the research in grade 9 and, and, and looking for the right school for them early and getting the academics in place and doing all the right steps. Uh, it's, so the process is ultimately important and leveraging um, people like Tark and his company to help you because it's, it's incredibly, there's how many colleges? I mean, there's hundreds of colleges. Yeah, every every little town has a college, yeah. right? And every yeah. little town has programs. So, you know, to understand exactly where you want to go and how you want to do it and leave that to the last second becomes very challenging. Right, so I, I can tell you, but we, when we started working with Tarek and working with his company, um, and, and you've gone through evolutions and change, yeah, absolutely. but as we did that, every kid that came out of our program was able to be placed somewhere if they wanted to go. I and, appreciate that. You know, but it's yeah. true, right? Yeah. And, and, and it was not because I knew how to do it, it's because you right. knew how to do it and you helped them. Right, and now with your new software and your methodology, these these kids, and again, whether it's Tarek or not, I mean, I'm yeah, always exactly. going to promote We're you. Right. Get get somebody, <laughs> get somebody to help you. It's not easy. It's not just running letters. I know kids right now who aren't at this academy yeah. who are in grade 12, running around trying to find scholarships in tennis. Yeah, and you know, probably better, obviously better than I do, the money spent. Yeah, at most of these schools for next year. Yeah, they've recruited already. Yeah, what are you? Who are you looking for? Now you're going to get the like the last school you want to go to. Yeah, you, I mean you're closing doors. You're closing yeah, doors. Closing doors. So no my, one's saying there isn't an opportunity, but you're no, definitely you're, you're closing doors. Yeah, like it doesn't make sense to start later. Like yeah. what's what's the reason? You're not saving any more money. No. Or you're just you know you're just yeah. losing opportunities. Ha- have them battle. Right? Do the process yeah. and have them battling over you by the time you get to grade twelve. Yeah. I, I would say in the states, grade twelve. Grade twelve is the when, end of high school. Yeah. In the states, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you know have them ba- have five or six schools fighting for you. Yeah. In grade twelve. 
Absolutely. If you follow the process. No, I think that's why you and I have always had such a good relationship yeah. um, and understanding because yeah. both of us have this method process, yeah. right? We're like, look, you know, there's certain things you need to do. Just do them. And you got to do, do them. You know, and there's certain things that you can, yeah. you know, develop and figure out and, and there's a certain level of commitment. So if all those go together, like you're going to have options, yeah, right? Like you're going to have opportunities. Yeah. And so that's what I like about what you do with your academy. And that's yeah. why I like, you know, the advice that you can give to people because I feel like, you know, that's the rational thinking that yeah. we all need to do yeah. and say, you know, like if you want to get better, and you're a tennis player, and like a lot of parents will, uh, or uh, kids are like, well, I'm a nine, I want to be a 10. Yeah. Well, what are you specifically what are the steps? doing? Like, what are the steps? Are the like, steps? you know, are you developing a certain weapon? Yeah. Are you, you know, uh, getting your fitness up? Yeah. Like, and are you evaluating that every few months? And how yeah. are the results working out, as yeah. you said? What can that coach offer you with exactly. their, like, do they have that experience? Yeah. So all those things, like, you know, we, we're on the same page, and I think that that's what we want to hammer home to these people, Absolutely. is uh, give them that advice. So, you know, I want to thank I, you for can I tell one more story? Do we yeah, have time? of course. Plenty of so, time. I, and I think a lot. I, I always one like, more story from Sean I'm Sweeney. Sorry. Good I, stories. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's good yeah. or not, but I, I, I think it's, it's. And it was shared to me by yeah. one, one of our performance trainers out of the states, and yeah. uh, we were talking about confidence and clarity. Okay. And he's, I, I, I happened to say one of my kids is losing confidence in her in her shot, and I just want to share with this with the parents and yeah. and, and maybe other coaches out there, and, and and he said it's not confidence, it's clarity, and he said Sean, if um, I took you to your house. And I said, okay, we're standing at the bottom of the stairs, run upstairs, go into your closet, and then run back down. And I timed you. And he goes, you'll do it in a pretty good time because you know exactly where you're going. Right. Now, let me put a blindfold on. Okay. okay? And he goes, do the same thing. How fast are you going to be? Faster or slower? I'm going I'm to be a lot slower. I got a feel for that. He goes, yeah. He goes, That's, did you lose confidence? I'm like, no. He goes, you lost clarity. I go, yes. And it's the same, to me, it's the same thing with the recruitment process. You got to okay. be crystal clear on where you want to go and how you're going to get there. Right, so take the blindfold off. Allow someone like yourself to help them, and allow them to be crystal clear on where they're going. And their pathway. And their pathway. So that's the last little story I wanted to tell. But I think it makes perfect sense for all of us. Yeah. Right. We're yeah. not lacking confidence. Your children aren't lacking confidence. They're lacking clarity on how they're going to get somewhere. Right. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have. I mean, that, I that's something that I could. Yeah. You, you no, no, did no, that. I stole, right from, from, I stole it from my trainer. Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, but right. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it because that is like uh, an unbelievable way to to yeah. sort of end it. And yeah. um, I think like your knowledge, your experience is so deep. You're always learning, which I always enjoy having conversations yeah. with you because every time I do get the chance to come up or to to Canada or you're yeah. down in the states, um, we talk about these things forever. We, yes. and, and it's great it's because I learn new things yeah. all the time. Um, Sean's gonna, you know, he's available. Um, we'll put in the comments of this video yeah. um, below. You can reach out to him. I hope that's okay with you. No, absolutely. That, um, yeah. You know, you're yeah. there to help people. You're there to guide people. Yeah. Wherever you are in the country, the world, um, Sean just has great um, insight on how to do it. He's done it so many times. So I want to thank you for being on here, man. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you so Any, much. Anytime. Thank you for putting up with my uh, verbiage for the last 20 minutes where we've been on here. So oh, thank it's fine. You. It's yeah. perfect. And I've been having it's so much fun being around here and seeing like Jordan and all the kids that yeah. I've. Helped. Worked with, helped, yeah. and uh, see them working with you, or they're in college, um, or finished college, and so it's just been, it's, it's the, the most satisfying thing yeah. for us, right? And, and listen, my, my kid didn't end up going to the States. He ended up staying here. Right. Right, but Tarek worked for them through the entire process, and he had signed with, I think, a G Juco, and, and, right. but he ended up staying here, and, and, and it, it, the, the whole process was still beautiful. It was still awesome. They were step by step, and it just happened that this was the right choice. The right choice, exactly. And that's it, right? Whereas Jeremy, my other coach, you talked about, went to University of Baltimore at Maryland, yeah. right? And yeah. had a great time there for a year, and then decided that's not right for him either, and came back. Exactly. But that's that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah everyone's awesome. got their, their the right way, pathway. and, yeah. and the, you got to try things out. Exactly. And if you don't try, you'll never learn. Yeah. So no. I'm going to plug him one more time. Get on his site, <laughs> work with him, and uh, get your kid to where they want to go in all sports now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because our football players are going to be taking all your spots if you don't, because he's going to help us. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Love it. All Thank right. you.